recent years, there have been several scientific research studies linking a higher rate of occupational cancer and other diseases to fire ground contamination. This research has had a profound impact on the fire service and has led to a greater awareness of occupational exposure from fire ground contaminants. It has also led to the implementation and or adjustment of evidence-based procedures aimed at reducing occupational exposure. The immediate objective is to remove as much fire ground contamination while still on scene. This will minimize exposure and absorption while preventing cross-contamination to the apparatus, firehouse, and beyond. Research demonstrated an 85% median reduction in polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, with wet decontamination and a reduction of 23% for dry decontamination. Decontamination should be performed on all members who operated within an ideal age environment. Further, members who performed overhaul and have obvious visual contamination along with those who operated in other positions on the fire ground and exhibit signs of contamination should be decontaminated. Signs of contamination include obvious visual contamination and off-gassing gear indicated by an odor of smoke emanating from the gear. Following responses to other type fires, such as dumpster or car fire, where members may not necessarily have operated within an ideal age atmosphere, but nonetheless received an exposure based on the previous mentioned criteria, on-scene decontamination should take place to minimize exposure and cross-contamination. When possible, and with due consideration to practicality, members should stay on air upon exiting the structure and proceed directly to decontamination. This consideration should be based on the location of the fire, the floor of the fire, and the members' remaining air supply. A firefighter low on air, as indicated by the Vibra Alert activation, will be prioritized and fast-tracked through decontamination so this member can remain on air. In cases where it is determined not practical, members must still proceed to be decontaminated. Upon arrival at the decontamination area, members with remaining air should go back on air during the decontamination process. This ensures a more thorough decontamination process for those firefighters and provides added airway protection from the inhalation of airborne contaminants. The boundary of the decontamination area should be defined by cones set up in a long rectangular corridor similar to a hazardous materials decon setup. Arrange the corridor like an assembly line with the first step of decon close closest to the entry point. The decontamination area must be set up well in advance of the anticipated firefighter exit from the structure. The entry and exit points must be well defined and firefighters must be guided to the entry point to begin the decon process. The area must be large enough to accommodate the anticipated number of firefighters that will require decontamination. An officer must be designated to supervise the decontamination process. Ideally, this would be the engine officer of a company assigned to perform decontamination. The decon area must be staffed with enough firefighters and equipment to ensure a speedy and efficient process to enable the decontaminated firefighters to quickly proceed to the rehabilitation area to cool down, wash up, and replenish fluids. The first step of the process is to rinse off visible fire ground contaminants. Large quantities of water are not needed and a garden hose is preferred. Larger hose streams tend to saturate the gear and drive water into the interface and closure openings of the gear, such as the glove sleeve interface, front jacket closures, under the coat, and at the collar. This is especially important when performing decon during the colder weather. The second step is to apply a soap and water solution to the contaminated member's gear. This solution is made up of dish soap, approximately two teaspoons, and water. It is made in a two gallon pump sprayer and then applied to the members requiring decon. Alternatively, this can be accomplished using a five gallon bucket with a solution of dish soap and water using two gallons of water with approximately two teaspoons of dish soap. The next step is to use an industrial scrub brush and scrub hard enough to effectively agitate the solution to produce bubbles. The agitation of the brush coupled with the water and dish soap solution is the key to removing the harmful PAHs that are on the contaminated gear. Soot is generally composed of lipid soluble compounds such as PAH and is sticky and not easily removed from the turnout gear without effective scrubbing with soap and water. The surfactants and dish soap act on the lipid molecules and enable them to be washed away from the surface of the gear. After the member is appropriately scrubbed down, the member continues to the next step and is rinsed off until no suds remain on the gear. Once the member is rinsed off, the next step is to come off air and be directed to a pre-designated rehabilitation area. It is at this point that the members remove their gear. As closely as possible, remove firefighter gloves the same way you'd remove blood-soaked EMS gloves. Continue to further decontaminate using a designated decontamination wipe. Using this wipe, it is essential to wipe all exposed skin 
beginning with the face, neck, and head. The firefighters remain in rehabilitation until they are cleared to return to duty or released from the scene. Following the release from the scene, members must shower and change into clean station wear as quickly as possible to further reduce exposure. Without question, the firefighter is our greatest resource and asset. Placing the firefighter back in service by taking a shower and changing into clean station wear must be given a higher priority than cleaning tools. The concept is to place the firefighter back in service first. Tools can be cleaned after the firefighter showers. An easily accomplished common sense action to minimizing occupational exposure to fire ground contaminants. Little effort, time and equipment, wet or dry on scene decon can typically be completed in less than five minutes per company of five firefighters. Since it is the better alternative, on-scene wet decontamination should take place whenever the outside temperature is above 40 degrees and should be considered at lower temperatures provided that firefighters have a heated area to rehab such as a warming tent or other shelter. It must be stressed that any action taken to minimize and or remove fire ground contamination is a positive step in the right direction. To borrow an acronym used for radiation exposure, the goal must be to minimize our exposure to be as low as reasonably achievable, ALARA. These steps minimize the absorption of dangerous gases into our body. They also minimize cross-contamination that can continue to expose members and their families long after the initial exposure on the fire ground.